If you have heard of or maybe just unlocked the Blue Mage and feel like it is a bit overwhelming, then this video is for you. In this guide, we'll be covering these subjects. Unlocking Blue Mage. Learning spells as a Blue Mage. The Blue Mage questline, as well as the Masked Carnival. Then we'll go over a list of particularly useful spells to pick up, both for leveling as well as for helping you unlock the rest of the spellbook. Finally, leveling Blue Mage, as well as detailing the two common ways to level, solo and with a high level friend. First and most important, Blue Mage is defined as a limited job, as in, not a normal combat job. This means that Blue Mage cannot progress the main story quest, cannot queue for roulettes or queue for any normal kind of duty finder groups and must enter all content either in undersized groups or in otherwise fully pre-made teams. Blue Mage is considered side content and in fact, Blue Mage is, as of the making of this guide, limited to level 70. To limit its power due to how incredibly overpowered it is when faced with otherwise fair content. Now, to unlock Blue Mage, you first need to progress far enough in the main scenario quest to see the credits roll, which happens relatively close to when the questline reaches level 50. Then you start the quest Out of the Blue in Lim Salaminsa. This starts you off with the level 1 Blue Mage and Water Cannon spell. The Blue Mage has access to the Blue Magic spellbook, which details a large selection of possible spells and abilities to learn. Each slot gives a suggestion as to where you can unlock the action, however, I do recommend looking up the spell to get more detailed advice. I will not be covering how to unlock every action here. To unlock a new spell, the enemy must cast a spell themselves, and they need to die while you are alive. Take note that the spell does not have to hit you specifically. Most open world spells are learned within a single fight, and those that don't tend to come from regular enemies, so you can just fight another one until it works. For dungeons, trials and raids, the probability of learning a spell is much lower if you choose to run the dungeon unsynced, meaning without getting scaled down to the encounter's level. Should you choose to do it synced, the chance of learning is guaranteed, and this is highly recommended. Remember that you have to be alive when the boss dies to be able to learn the spell. Additionally, if the spell you are trying to learn is required to progress the Blue Mage questline, it is guaranteed regardless of whether you are synced for the content it is acquired from. Speaking of which, let's talk about the Blue Mage questline. Every 10 levels you can get a new quest, and after level 50 you get quests a lot more frequently. Unless you are power leveling with some help, we'll cover this later. It is highly recommended to do your job questline as you unlock it, for multiple reasons. Each quest works as a sort of guideline as some suggestions of spells to acquire. For instance, the level 10 quest also requires you to learn Blood Drain, which can be learned from cave bats in Lower Lanasea. More importantly, doing the questline will quickly unlock access to Gahil Ya, which gives out Wallachie totems when you fulfill certain requirements, mainly when you have learned a certain number of spells. Some of these spells are crucially important for a blue mage, so getting them as soon as possible can make a huge difference. Just to list a few, this is the only way to get a tank stance, a strong raid white heal that works even if you're not a healer, as well as the only raising spell blue mages can get. Before moving on, a little tip. Wait with trying to acquire Mind Blast for the level 20 quest until after you acquire Basic Instinct, Mighty Guard and White Wind. I will get back to this. On the level 50 part of your job quest line, you also unlock the masked carnival. Well, let's be realistic. While it unlocks, you're also required to do certain fights in the masked carnival. Mainly the hardest ones, to progress your job quest further. Not to mention that the blue mage race is locked behind completing the whole thing. Well, except for one, but at that point you might as well do all 31 fights. Masked Carnival is a fun way to test your ability as a Blue Mage, as each encounter requires something specific of you to proceed, and of course, some of them are made much easier by having access to more powerful attacks in general. I can highly recommend looking up how to do a fight if you find it difficult, as they are often seen as puzzles to be solved. The Masked Carnival also registers weekly targets to do with certain challenges applied to them, such as Elemental Mastery, where you have to cast at least one spell of each element before finishing. Before entering Masked Carnival, you can benefit a lot from collecting as many spells as you can find. 
In particular, certain primal abilities can make nearly every single challenge easier to accomplish. This does indeed mean that once the mass carnival is unlocked, you may benefit from waiting with progressing the job quest further until after you reach max level. Speaking of useful spells, let's talk about that. First, if you intend to power level with a friend, the spammable interrupt spell Flying Sardine is very useful. Go to Costa del Sol, find an Apkalu, have your friend shield you with a job like Scholar or Sage, and then attack the penguin with water cannon. Yes, at level 1. Then have your friend cast a heal on you to grab attention, and then wait until it throws a sardine at them, and then have your friend defeated. This should teach you flying sardine. I will explain how this is useful later. On the other hand, if you want to level alone, there may be reasons to pick up almost any spell you can find, both because it can be helpful, but also because having access to certain Wallachy spells as soon as you unlock Gahilja can be wildly useful. I will try to list spells you can acquire here and then highlight particularly useful or important ones among them. Keep in mind that if you are capable of defeating an enemy on your own, you can acquire a spell at lower levels, but I will list the level that you can acquire a spell at as the level that the enemy that grants it will be. At level 5, you can pick up Blood Drain, which is a consistent way to gain mana at any time. Although it does very little damage, you will need this to progress the Blue Mage quest. At level 12, you can pick up Acorn Bomb, an on-demand AoE sleep effect. With Endwalker making sleep a roll action, this is not particularly crucial to get, but it is both a spell for the count of getting Wallachy totems, and Acorn Bomb is also much cheaper to cast. At level 24, you can acquire 1000 Needles, which, while having a long cast time, does a flat 1000 damage spread on all nearby enemies. Which is absolutely bonkers and more than anything else you could use pretty much until you reach level 50, at least for one or two targets. Additionally, you also have access to Basic Instinct, which allows you to boost your stats enormously while alone in group content. If you pick up every easily obtainable spell up till this point, you should have enough to get both White Wind and Mighty Guard from Valaki totems. With Basic Instinct, White Wind and Mighty Guard, you may well be able to solo most 4-man dungeons synced. With that in mind, this enables you to solo acquire Mind Blast from Tamtara Deepcroft. Now, there are many spells to get, and I would recommend a spreadsheet over me rattling off all of them, as you would have to repeatedly check back on it, not to mention cross off spells you have gotten. However, I will still list some absolutely amazing spells you can get. At level 38, you can do the dungeon Cutter's Cry, where the last boss gives Ram's voice, and Dragon's voice, but that is far less important. Ram's voice is effectively a 15 second AoE stun, but do remember that diminishing returns are a thing. You can effectively replace Acorn Bomb or Sleep with this spell and once your gear makes Ram's Voice do more damage than 1000 Needles, you can move over to just using Ram's Voice if you wish. In fact, at level 53, you can pick up Choco Meteor from Corsa Chocobos in Dravanian Forelands. When you have your Chocobo companion present in open world areas, Choco Meteor is effectively your strongest raw damage spell. At level 60, the adds on the first boss in Pharaoh's Sirius Heart can give you the crucially important Aetherial Mimicry spell. Using this spell on another player grants you a buff that enables you to mimic their role. Use it on a DPS and you get a huge critical hit and direct hit chance boost. Using it on a tank makes you really tanky, and using it on a healer boosts your healing and also makes some otherwise rather weak healing spells strong enough to rival normal healers. Extending on that, for tanking in full parties, picking up the look for its bonus enmity can be helpful. For healers, Palm Cure, Gobskin and Stot Trap are all super useful, although be aware that all three are acquired from 8-man content, so starting that collection as a healer may be difficult. For all blue mages, once you start dealing with hard content, getting diamond back can enable you to cheat in many boss mechanics and for tanks, sometimes it is required to survive certain tank busters. Speaking of hard content, pretty much every single primal and several trial boss fights in general have each their own ability you can learn. And most of them are so useful that you want to have every single one in your chosen spell list, with the exception being that some of them exclude each other pairwise. 
For instance, Ifrit's eruption and Garuda's feather rain share cooldown, so you should only use one of them. To round off on this spell list ramble, the long and the short of it is that it is good to have as many spells as you can. In fact, one of the best DPS spells is awarded for having 100 spells and with a grand total of only 104 spells. Even if you determine that a spell is useless, you may find that you might need it just for the sake of collecting it. Now, with all of this information, we are finally ready to talk about the actual leveling process. Blue mages earn far more experience from defeating enemies in the open world, so it is inefficient to bother doing side quests, dungeons, or even fates. The best you can do is fight appropriate enemies. Put a pin in that. Appropriate enemies does not necessarily mean near your level. Not at all. Let's start with the easiest way to level blue mage. This relies on having a high level, preferably level 90, friend to help you. The fastest way to perform this requires access to the zone Colusia in Shadowbringers. You tag an enemy with a ranged spell and then your friend finishes them off. It is important to note that this will not work if you are in the same party. The most effective spells to perform this with would be instant spells. Unfortunately, blue mages do not exactly have an astounding list of instant spell options. Your one and only option is the Flying Sardine, which is why it is so important to go and grab that immediately if you plan to use this method of leveling. Once you have picked up Flying Sardine, travel to Stilltide in Colusia and use it to grab attention on enemies and have your high level friend finish them off. Or at least grab their attention before it is too late. The most effective jobs at assisting in this method are Sage, Scholar and Machinists. Sage and Scholar being able to shield you makes it safer, while Machinist's strong instant attacks makes the kills faster. This method of tagging and finishing enemies is by far the fastest way to level up blue mages, however, it is not the only way. If you don't have access to Colusia, a high level friend, or just prefer to do it solo, there is another way. Fight enemies around your level to collect experience. Keep in mind that blue mages scale really well with stats on your gear, so if you have gear with relevant stats, this can be very helpful. When fighting enemies equal to your level or above, you can start a chain by defeating them in succession. This is a timer that appears near your experience bar, and while each subsequent kill reduces the timer but also resets it, the amount of experience you get is also significantly increased. So make sure to at the very least fight enemies in sets if you can. Remember to do your job quests as you go. Wait with the level 21 until you have Basic Instinct, Mighty Guard and White Wind. Now, around level 20, picking up the spells Acorn Bomb from the large trees in the Black Shroud, as well as 1000 needles from Sabotent or Bailaos near Little Alamigo will be extremely helpful. Be aware that the Sabotenders will be significantly higher level than you if you go at level 20, so you can wait a few levels if you find it difficult. Once Acorn Bomb and 1000 Needles have been unlocked, you can beat most things on your way to level 50 by alternating between sleeping enemies and using 1000 Needles to wipe them out. Once enemies start having more than 1000 health, you can make use of sleeping them multiple times with Acorn Bomb. You may even be capable of fighting enemies upwards of 10 levels above you. Remember that while Mighty Guard reduces the damage you do, 1000 Needles does fixed damage and so it is not affected by this. So when utilizing this strategy, make sure to have Mighty Guard on. When you reach level 50, use Tomestones of Poetics to pick up Ironworks Magitech gear. And now, you can start to get more creative with your spell choices as 1000 Needles stops being particularly useful at this point. Around level 38 and 53 respectively, picking up Ram's Voice and Choco Meteor can be extremely helpful for making your leveling experience even faster and smoother. If you prefer to focus on leveling first, parking your job quests once you unlock the mass carnival and returning to it later is a perfectly viable option. The capstone encounters required to continue your questline may require several obscure spells, so it might be easier to just focus on spell collecting at first. Now, if you followed along with the entirety of this guide, you should have the knowledge of what spells are particularly handy to have at first, some that can be extra helpful to start your collection with, and how to make your way to max level. Remember that each unknown spell in your spellbook will give a hint as to where it can be found, but this is typically only one of sometimes multiple places you can get it, 
So making use of websites with the full list can be very time saving, unless of course you like hunting down the spells yourself, in which case, uh, sorry for spoiling some of them. I will cover things like builds, both statwise and spellbook choices, both starter ones and more advanced ones, as well as how to use them in a separate video that I will link in the top right corner once it is available. There we will also talk a bit about the Blue Mage log, the real endgame of Blue Mages. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or anything to add, please leave a comment down below. Also, if you liked this guide and would like to see more from me, you can subscribe to get notified whenever I release a new video. Fun fact, back when blue mages could only go to level 50 and didn't have access to any raise spell, self-destruct and final sting didn't apply the brush with death debuff disabling them for 10 minutes. This debuff was specifically implemented to prevent strategies which might involve blue mages repeatedly using these spells which were intended to be one-time use.